The following is intended for mature audiences only. Discretion is advised. Pillow fight, pillow fight. This is so fun. Oh, pillow fighting. Why is it so fun? Pillow fight. Hey, it's me, Yamini, and you're listening to Pillow Fight. If you want more of us, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Pillow Fight Pod. If you love us, leave us a review in the Apple Podcast app or wherever you listen to podcasts. We've got an amazing episode in store for you, so buckle up. Thanks so much for listening. Pillow fight, pillow fight. Is yours made of goose? We got feathers flying everywhere. Mine's made of goose. Pillow fight, pillow fight. This is so fun. Pillow fighting. Why is it so fun? Pillow fight. Today on Pillow Fight, I'm joined by Shelby Wolstein a Los Angeles-based writer, actor, and comedian. She's also the co-host of the podcast Keeping Records with her platonic husband, Caleb Heron. You can find more of Shelby on Instagram and Twitter at Shelby Wolstein. In this episode, we discuss weird celebrity parenting, which gyms are secretly cults, and all the ways we scam teachers back in the day. Fuck. Mary? Kill. Fuck, Mary, kill. So for the fuck, Mary kill, you mentioned to me that you just found out that Alicia Silverstone baby birds her son, which I didn't know, but did I you Google it. I did Google it. And this <laughs> made me think about what other weird things that celebrity parents do with their children. So this just had me thinking about some celebrities and how they parent because it must be like a strange world being parented by celebrities. So I have three scenarios. First off, of course, when her son was an infant, Clueless star Alicia Silverstone was seen baby birding her son, which is a technique that's named after the practice by which birds feed their young. So they chew up their food and then they kind of like spit it into their children's mouth. And that's how the babies have their food. Number two is Snooki. So Jersey, store, Jersey Shore star Snooki did her homework before having children. In the few months leading up to motherhood, she carried a baby doll around with her everywhere she went to practice for what it would be like to have a baby baby around with her everywhere she went. And number three, Christina Aguilera keeps several artistic female nudes hung throughout her house in order to teach her son a lesson about women who are sexually empowered. So... Alicia they're not of her. Are they of her? <laughs> I don't think they're of her. She says she's okay. an art collector. <laughs> so I think that they are just like fancy art. So Alicia okay. Silverstone's baby birding, Snooki's uh, Barbie doll baby, and Christina Aguilera's uh, house full of nudes, fuck, Mary kill, these parenting techniques. What would you do? I guess it's tough because I'm like, okay, I actually kind of agree with Christina Aguilera on it being powerful. But ultimately, like, imagine inviting a friend over to your house. (laughs) So I'm like, I think I have to fuck that. I don't think I can marry it. But then I'm like, well, which one do I marry? And I do think the baby doll is the least weird. (laughs) (laughs) And then you have to kill. Like, I can deal with a baby doll being around all the time. I cannot deal with someone, like, regurgitating their food into a baby all the Uh time. So you can't marry baby birding. I think you have to kill baby burning. You have to marry the baby doll and you have to uh, fuck the tasteful nudes. What do you think like Snooki could have learned from doing that with a doll? I literally don't know because unless it's one of those, because I had a doll growing up. This is mortifying. My siblings <laughs> make fun of me for this all the time. I begged for this and took it everywhere with me. A doll that did poop. Mm hmm. Now, <laughs> you had to put a mixture in there to make sure it would poop. There was like, <laughs> there's a process involved in that. So if you're getting one of those, I mean, you at least have sort of that aspect. Papers to change. Yeah. Feeding it to make sure it poops, letting it poop, figuring out the poop. But like, n- you have no repercussions. The baby yeah. fall, like, <laughs> I literally think for her, it was, I'm going to lose this baby. I'm going to not... <laughs> I think for her, it was like, if I don't learn how to keep something with me all the time, I will lose my baby (laughs) physically. And so it wasn't about responsibility of like taking care of a kid so much as it was like, if I go out, I can't lose the kid. I got to keep it with me. I'm just like, how is that different than carrying around like a purse? (laughs) 
<laughs> like in the functionality of the, the thing being kind of the same in that it's just kind of like there and you're kind of carrying it. It's not she's used to the purse. She's yeah. already has the purse. She's got the purse with it. Now she's it's like, like how do I remember? Wallet, keys, yeah. mask, baby. <laughs> yeah. She has to, yeah. It's like, she has to get a new rhythm in mind. Yeah. So she's like, yeah. Phone wallet, keys, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and now she's reminding herself it's putting yourself in the rhythm before, you know, there's I mean, whatever works. Sick. Whatever works. I respect that. You know, if it if it made her a better mom, then go off. I mom. once literally like watched a woman put her baby on the floor at the train station and had to like, and it was one of the scariest moments of my life. I almost acquired the baby. The thing about parenting is that <laughs> anyone can have a baby, <laughs> but like, why does everyone? get to raise a baby yeah yeah yeah. you know I, like I'm I'm not advocating for eugenics or anything here like I think everyone <laughs> should be able to reproduce freely but I yeah. don't know if everyone should be able to like be a parent I was listening to something like two days ago where they were like oh it was Elliot Glazer on some podcast don't know mm-hmm. which one Na- I don't know her last name so I'm not gonna say the podcast name her first name's Naomi um (laughs) and he was like I think if you're gonna have a baby the government should make you get therapy first yeah and then they say like okay (laughs) I I really think that right now any expense I'm incurring into like bettering my mental health should become a tax write-off once I have children yes I'll save it up for them yeah it's like okay how much therapy did you do? And it's like, all right, that is free diapers. That is that <laughs> you are set on so many things mm-hmm. because you have taken care of yourself, your brain, yeah. your mind. Yeah, my mom has joined sort of like a cult. And the cult is, and I know that sounds like I'm kidding, but I really don't think I am. I haven't been, but it my understanding is it is a mm-hmm. cult. And it um is actually making her a better person. I think that is the thing about cults is like, there's a reason you get into it. There's a reason it sucks you in. And she like really is getting in touch with herself, but ultimately it's also like falling deeper into the arms of the cult. What and it is? What makes you think it's a cult? What is like, Oh, what everything do? about it. It's called Psy. Um, you have to like get more people to join as you become part of it. And you go to these retreats for like a month. And you pay for them mm-hmm. for it. And it is, it becomes your whole life. Like all of her friends now are from Psy. All of her, everything is Psy. Everything she does is Psy. And I'm like, damn, okay. And she keeps being like, you should join. And I'm like, I don't want to. I'm not gonna. Um, but she is in a cult. When does an MLM become a cult? Um, At what point? I think it's a certain. Because to me, this is sounding MLM. But there's no product. There's no product. Well, an MLM becomes a cult when there's no product involved. Okay. I think once, I think some of them, they're like, is there really a product that you're selling (laughs) here? Or is it kind of an ideology or kind of a vague thing with no lines or limitations? Like, what do they do on their retreat? Vibe. I really don't even know. Like, I, my mom keeps trying to get me to go to one. Mm -hmm. and I don't want to um mostly because it sounds really bad and um one of my mom's friends went with her to one because my mom like begged Mm -hmm. and she like wasn't allowed out like once you went in you weren't allowed out and she had to sneak through the bathroom door window oh okay yeah not an MLM could your could your mom like leave the group now if she wanted to I really don't know. I think it would be hard. My mom's friend went to like the one, like a day thing. And then Mm -hmm. they were like, okay, now everyone has to commit to the next week. And she was like, oh, I'm good. And they were like, no. And she was like, what? (laughs) And she was like, I couldn't get out of it. Like I kept trying. I was giving excuses. They were countering. And she was like, so I said I had to go to the bathroom and I stuck out the window. Okay, this is like canceling a gym membership, though. Yeah, well, gyms ever, are cults. Gyms are have cults. you ever canceled a gym membership? I have absolutely canceled a credit card instead. <laughs> 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 I 
I don't know how to cancel a gym membership. And I've instead been like, I'm challenging this with my bank. They are <laughs> difficult to, I know. to cancel. And to the point where I was looking for an apartment recently, and I spent a lot of time trying to find an apartment with the head of fitness center in the basement. Because I knew I knew that it would it was easier to break a lease than to cancel a gym membership, and I was like, you know what? If I need to just like if I need to leave, I'll be able to leave, and I can leave the treadmills behind too. But I do not know how to leave a gym, and I I tried to do I did some sort of like few months discounted gym membership when I was in LA doing an internship a few years ago, and I thought I had canceled it, and they were still like charging me like some tiny fee a month that was like the fee that I paid to park for an extra 30 minutes every day as opposed to like just an hour it was very very convoluted but it seems like that that's like they're really getting into the cult model yeah I do think some gyms are cult some gyms aren't yeah but some some gyms gyms really really are are. like uh Equinox Equinox is a cult yeah Barry's boot camp cult Barry's boot camp cult but then like, oh, what's the one with the orange? Orange theory. Not yeah, a cult. Not a cult. People don't like it as much. CrossFit, cult. Cult. CrossFit is a religious cult. Yeah, CrossFit is like Christian. CrossFit is like <laughs> yeah, cross, CrossFit is a Christian cult. But you know, Equinox is more of a, a rich people cult. Equinox is like kind of on par with Scientology to me. Yeah. They've got some of the like celebs in there, and then they've got some regular people and Someone's the gonna worst. leave. There's gonna be a documentary one day where some star comes out and exposes Equinox. So, and I can't wait. I, yeah. The thing about Equinox is that it does look beautiful. Okay, it does. the machines are all like black and white. I'm like, sure, <laughs> why not? I think I don't know how it is different because the machines at my any gym I've ever belonged to are also black, but somehow different. They're not sleek. The ones at Equinox are chic. Yeah, I think they like just. You know, they they don't sweat, they glow, those mm. machines, just like the people inside. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, just something about it. I think you kind of like when you walk through the doors, they spray some sort of like Wizard of Oz thing on you and you're kind of looking, you're like, it's aspirational. I don't know. I think branding is a huge part of it, for <sighs> sure. I'm wondering if you have to wean a baby off of baby birthing the same way that you wean them off of breastfeeding. I mean, I got... I- you can't can do it, it forever. Can it be good for your digestive system to not have to digest your food? Like their bodies aren't learning how to digest food like normal people. <laughs> um, yeah, but see, I learned how to digest food like normal people and I'm still not okay. So That's I don't so know. Fair. That's I so think, fair. Is it, the, know, is it ultimately the same as baby food just made sort of in an organic way? Like baby food is mashed up food. I think okay. Gwen Paltrow is like a few uh, like contracts away from chewing up food, spitting it out, putting it in a jar and selling it on Goop. So I'll buy. Just kidding. I don't like Gwyneth, but I would buy just for the joke. Um, <laughs> but I think I might fuck that situation, the baby birding your child, because I honestly find it kind of like funny. I think it's like <laughs> it is funny. I'm I'm like people. It, yeah, I don't see how it's that different really from, from, um, from baby food. And maybe it's like, you know, I get to try some new foods and, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to do the work of digesting them, but I can, you know, try some fun flavors and then share. I do have some, there are pros and cons. Okay. One pro for the mom, you can eat whatever you want. Like I could have French fries, yeah. fully taste them and not... <laughs> no consequence on my body (laughs) (laughs) I do have a question though and it's like what is the transport process are we making am I macking with my kid I don't want to yeah I don't want to either I think I think that that situation is like there's like a either I don't want to spit it out either I think a tube is like the best way um but I think or I could just spit it out in a bowl and have the kid eat it also, I was the kind of baby who never ate anything. Like I would have, I had a friend who was a year and a half younger than me, who, when I was age six, used to have to come over and feed me. Um, Cause I was just the kind of baby who just would not eat. Like I refused to do it unless somebody was like putting the food in my mouth. 
And I think that this may have like been fun for me. So, um, well, it makes it a collaborative process. Yeah. And everyone like, loves to collaborate. You know, there's the pressure is not entirely on me <laughs> to like do this, you know? Um, there also is that like, you know how some kids like won't eat food unless their parents take a bite because they're like, it's bad. I know it's, it's bad. Yeah. There's that, but they're still not eating it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. They're still spitting it back up. Also, yeah. Are you then teaching your kid to spit their food out? Because that's an annoying thing that some kids I babysit will do is like, not like really? something and spit it out i don't know this is also the things i hate i've always hated <laughs> people who were like terribly picky eaters not in a <laughs> way that like they just didn't like certain things but that they wouldn't try certain things and yes. i don't know if that's like if that would better or reinforce that kind of behavior you know the well, kind the- of kid who only brings chicken nuggets and like hawaiian rolls to lunch I knew a kid who, honest to God, would only eat a food if it was like pale beige. Plain noodles, toast, Cheerios, like all he would eat. And he was like my best friend when I was a kid. So every time I went over there, I was like, great, I guess I'm eating white food. I don't know. <laughs> like, does he like have, does the he color have white now? I don't know. He just got engaged. He goes to a lot of Ren fairs. Whoa. Whoa. And I'm not saying that that's bad or no, good. I think I'm just saying I just don't know a lot of people to a lot of red bears, You know, yeah, he seems like he's gotten kind of weird. Is the problem? Does, does he like what's the other thing called Medieval Times? He would love that. Okay, I think. I, I feel like I loved that as a kid too, but I don't I, remember. I went for like a field trip. Mm-hmm, me too. And it was cool. Uh huh. I, I remember feeling like a little left out because I don't eat meat, and they had like those massive chicken legs, turkey legs, chicken yes. legs, something. Yes. And everyone was like chowing down and they gave me some like minestrone soup. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I think I was also vegetarian at the time that I went to medieval times. I stopped being vegetarian at, I had a reverse journey the same way that I, <laughs> the same way that I came to my bisexuality in a reverse way. And that I started with women and then uh, found men. I, <laughs> I grew up 10 years of my life vegetarian and then slowly started eating fish and chicken and occasionally some red A real Benjamin Button's journey. Yeah, I think I've had a lot of backwards (laughs) experiences. Um, But yeah, I don't know. So I don't know about this. I think that I think I'm going to fuck the baby birding. Um, Have at. I love that for you. um, I won't kink shame. I think that the Christina Aguilera. (laughs) having the the nudes in her home could backfire it could be a kid who is becomes very ashamed of like having friends over because like mommy has naked mm-hmm. women all over the walls and then he grows up to become an incel and resents his mother for having uh you know like for being empowered in her sexuality I think maybe we need like more of like a just a care and keeping of you kind of book situation. I don't think we need like female nudes, like uh, art institute gallery on the walls. Right. So. So you're ma- you're marrying the baby doll. Yeah. Just like you. You also married the baby doll. I married the baby doll. Um, And I think that, you know, no harm, no foul. There is ne- no there is gain for Snooki here and that she is learning how to be a mother. There is uh, no con for anyone around her except they have to see a grown woman carrying around a baby doll, which, you know, fun. Honestly, we need more of that kind of energy. It's fun. Um, <laughs> I spent the last year not seeing anyone. I would have loved to see, you know. Someone holding a baby doll. A Jersey Shore star carrying around a doll in the grocery store. Like, I would have loved that. And I think that, you know, if it made her feel, like, confident when her baby came, good for her. Like that's she's yeah she's making the right moves i think the alicia silverstone thing and like that could be gross it could have negative impact consequences you know but it's it's it intrigues me the christina Aguilera thing that also sounds like kind of expensive uh to you know have to collect that much art to teach your son about empowered women um, yeah it's like you know people teach their kids for free <laughs> <laughs> so i think the sneaky thing i would marry okay yeah i have too many questions to fuck the Alicia Silverstone thing. I just think I, it's like, you know, when someone hasn't been tested and you're like, I'm not so sure. 
That's how I feel about it. But you've never fucked anyone who you'd have a bunch of questions about? Because I've done that a lot of times. I, I really, really touche. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, really touche. I think like um, the Christina Aguilera thing reminds me of like in college, some like really hot, like really smart person who like gets around a lot, who I'm like almost like not fun enough for me that it's like so (laughs) perfect seeming like or so successful like I want I want a challenge and I want a mess I want a little mess yeah I hear that not for not to marry but like to fuck yeah I would like a little mess okay yeah (laughs) like I feel in this game of fuck marry kill that marry and kill are much closer options than um than than yeah they're absolutes yeah they're absolutes yeah Cause, what does fuck even mean? It's up to you. <laughs> you know what killing is. You it's more of a concept. Yeah. Fuck is more of a concept. Yeah. La- oh my gosh. Last week, I two weeks ago, two episodes ago, we did fuck Mary kill about a lot of people's responses to cancel culture, and I posted a clip on Instagram of me saying that I would fuck Joe Rogan, saying that white men wouldn't be allowed to go outside anymore um, because of cancel culture, because I think that would be fun because white men, it, I hope that he, what he's saying comes true. And I hope that they don't get to go outside anymore. And like, just, you know, the streets Hang are free outside, of them. Yeah. And yeah. so many, so many people are like, you would fuck this situation. Like you're sick in the head. Like you would fuck <laughs> the idea of people having to be locked up in their homes. And yet you say that you're, you know, progressive who believes in like, you know, decarcerate, decarceral. I'm like, okay. The internet is perfect and there's <laughs> not a single thing wrong with it. There's this, so when we created the internet, we knew what we were doing. We did it right the first time. No notes. No notes at all. I feel like I've referenced this on this podcast so many times that it always just feels so relevant because so much of what I talk about on this is like pop culture and the internet. But I once read that humans are only evolved to know like 40 people or like to be able to perceive of like 40 people because our brains haven't evolved from like the time when we were in this way, from when we were like cavemen to only being able to conceptualize of like two social circles outside of our own. And so now that we kind of can know anyone we want. Yeah, I can know the world. It's, it's very much an overload, but I think that I think about that a lot and how I'm like, what 40 people would I put in that circle? I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. My my friend Kennedy, Kennedy Baldwin, has a game that she's made me play before that is like, I don't know why this made me think of it. Maybe it's stupid, but I will say it. It is so you're having a party. Mm -hmm. You can only invite eight people. Okay. But you can't tell people who are invited. So like you tell everyone that you're having a party and only your eight closest friends or something are supposed to show up. How many people of that eight will show up and how many people thinking they're in that eight will show up and shouldn't. And then like, we've done like naming names and stuff being like, Oh, I think this person would show up, but they wouldn't be in my eight. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't yeah. have to explain that. Well, I because, think I would um, have like five that would be true. And then there would be three probably um, like, and the three direction. stragglers would not be like my second tier, like the next eight. They would be like people in it's the, so far off. Yeah. <laughs> so far yeah. off that like text a lot and you're like, what's happening? <laughs> I kind of people, I'm like, you're very nice and I like you, but you definitely think that we are best friends and I don't know anything about you. <laughs> yeah, I it was, it's really hard. Maybe it was supposed to be like five. I just remember once I sat there and I was like, I don't even know how to narrow down my five. Mm -hmm. So then how could anyone narrow down if they're in the five? And then there's also the people who'd be like, maybe I'm not in her five. And then it's like, well, that's really sad. If they're in my five, they don't think it. Yeah. It's a tough, how many people's, how many people's fives do you think that you would be in? That's the other thing. It's like, if I knew this was happening, there are so many people's parties I wouldn't go to just out of the fear of being like. <laughs> would you find out? Turned away at the door. I would be so scared to be turned away at the door that I would just be like, yeah, I'm not going to go. <laughs> I don't want to go. I don't want to know the truth. Schrodinger's cat. I don't have to know. If mm-hmm. I don't go, I don't have to know. Yeah. I think it's like 
weird to know. I, I used to know a friend group in college who literally had a social hierarchy that was not really spoken aloud, but often alluded to where there were like three people at the top. And then there was like the next tier of like wingmen. And then at the bottom, there were these like people who, when it benefited You're them. You're talking about a sorority. Around. But I guess some of them were in a sorority, <laughs> but like it was a specific, one specific friend group I knew in college. I don't want, I, I, everyone who I went to college with is going to know exactly who I'm talking about when they hear this. That's all I need to say. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was actually absurd the way that they operated. And then there were like people at the bottom who would like glom on to people in power, but they would kind of cycle through, you know, trendiness in the friend group. It was all very weird. That's uh, wild. There was kind of that in my middle school. I went to all girls school and there was like, that is a very middle school thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. There was, yeah. and they would name their group of friends. And so you would know if you weren't in it because the names always had to do with the initials of the people in it. Yeah. 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 Brutal. We, we had, um, <laughs> we had, my, my high school was very odd named clicks, but they were all like very random. Um, I wish it was random. Instead, it was like, we are <laughs> Kale. <laughs> like, I don't want to name names. Katie, yeah. Alexa, Louisa, and Emma. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, yeah. okay, yeah, I'm not Kale. <laughs> like, <laughs> understood. <laughs> and then you would go to like one of the sleepovers and you'd, you'd be like, for today, we're Kales. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> oh my gosh, that reminds me of Pen15. <laughs> so true. <truly> yeah. Deep. <laughs> yeah. All right, do you want to go into the would you rather? Would you rather, would you rather, would you rather? Let's play a game of would you rather. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you remember, but a few years ago, Melania Trump wore a jacket that said, I don't really care, do you? While <laughs> flying to go visit the border detainment facilities. And now we have a new first lady and Jill Biden wore a jacket that said love and like sparkly bedazzled letters to the G7 summit. And um, we hate Melania more than we hate Jill, but I have to say both of these jackets are very, very tacky and <laughs> um, seem like they would have been sold at Forever 21, 2008, but are now on a public scale in the 2010s. So would you rather have like a highlight of your career, whatever that might be? So winning an award, you know, going on some sort of tour or something. I don't know what, what that would be, whatever that means to you. Captured while you're wearing like a hideous, hideous outfit that everyone tears apart. Or in your laundry day underwear? I'd be caught in my laundry. So am I not yeah. wearing pants? Yeah, just caught in your laundry day underwear. No pants. Unless you're under. Or is it just like peeking? <laughs> no. You know <laughs> like, mm, like, you know, those bad dreams that people have where they're like, yes. kind of show up somewhere in their underwear. It wouldn't be like your career is captured in this. Your the high- highlight of your career is captured in your laundry underwear. But you're like, you are caught. You're caught out with someone someone snags a a paparazzi pic or like a you know one of your friends shames you on your birthday with a picture of you in your laundry day underwear laundry day underwear it's so relatable yeah (laughs) (laughs) i'm trying to be one of the people (laughs) yeah i think that it's also it doesn't read on me it's not a read on me it's like oh i just was you caught me on a bad day it has nothing to do with like a choice i made yeah I mean, it's a choice you made once whenever you bought the, that underwear. But <laughs> I just think it's much more proletariat and the and the, the weird the weird outfits are one percent because you always see very rich people at award ceremonies in the most fugly things. And I'm like, how do you pay that much for a stylist and yet have no taste? Truly. Yeah. I, as soon as I have the money for a stylist, I'm going to look good and effortless at all times. No one's going to know that I'm styled, but I'm styled. No one's going to know you're styled and your stylist is going to revolt because you're not publicizing them. No enough. one's going to know that I'm paying them enough. <laughs> they don't need, they don't need me. If anyone asks, it'll be like a, like an under the table thing. Like, oh, call her. She's yeah. Great. Yeah. But no one's going to be like, damn, she has a stylist, huh? I'm going to have gonna a stylist, so... but we're going to have, we're going to have a serious talk. And if they ever put me in something that ugly and convince me of it and then the next day vanity fair writes a tell-all about how hideous i look 
I'm right. I'm 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 going public. I'm going public. I'm secrets. naming names. I'm, going I'm naming names because I don't know. Nope, nope, nope. I think it's really embarrassing to be caught in an 80s outfit. It a, is. It's so much worse than underwear to me. Yeah. Underwear is just underwear. Like everyone wears it. Yeah. Like who cares? It's you like know? everyone has a really old pair of underwear that you're just sort of like, yeah, every once in a while I'm on my period and I got to wear them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you want from me? And people aren't really, ju- people who don't know you aren't really going to judge you for it as an adult because it's like, yeah, like you, those weren't really meant for us to see anyway. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's not like you're in middle school and like, you know, everyone's like, ha, you wear any panties when it's like you're supposed to be wearing thongs by now. Um, no. So I think it's it's way less embarrassing. Way less. Yeah. It's yeah, it's not an intention. If you're wearing an ugly outfit, the intention was for it to be cool. It's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. If you're wearing laundry under air and you're caught, the intention was for it to never be seen. <laughs> yes. So you're like, oh. I mean, we all know what happened here. This yeah. is a mistake. Versus like, oh, I was totally off base in what I thought looked good. And, mm-hmm. and, and I have nobody close enough to me to tell me. That it was story. bad. Yeah. Yeah. I started having those nightmares about not about showing up to school in underwear, except it, during COVID, they were that I was showing up to places without masks. And I think that they're finally going to start stopping now that mask restrictions are being lifted which is interesting. We'll see. I, I've been rock climbing, Mm -hmm. which, you know, I hate to make public, but it is true. And the, my rock gym was like, so nobody has to wear masks anymore for us. We're not going to make you wear, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask when you're climbing. If you're not vaccinated, you do, Mm -hmm. but we will not check. So it's fully an honor system. Yeah. I'm like, well, I don't know. I think I think like the Venn diagram of people who want to wear a mask and want and don't want to get vaccinated, like don't want to. Yeah, is like very, very minimal overlap. Yeah, it's like if you didn't get vaccinated, I know you also don't really want to wear a mask at this gym. So like then I'm like, so then I keep wearing a mask. Because I don't know who to trust in this gym, but then I'm like, then everyone's going to think I'm not vaccinated (laughs) and I am. It's a tricky slope. Yeah. What if you just kind of like get one of those, uh, maybe like you, you, you wear kind of one of those uh, athletic shirts that uh, is a kind of a turtlenecky thing and you just kind of uh, tuck it. Yeah. Yeah. I start like stitching on my mask, like vaccinated, just nervous. <laughs> I think like that at a climbing gym, you're 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 usually so far in the vertical air from someone else anyway. So it's uh that's true for the most part. Although like every once in a while, you're like wa- like someone like falls off the wall like right next to you. You're like, oh <laughs> yeah. There you are. Are you do you boulder? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm I never so powerful, so strong. I was never very good at that, but I liked uh, being attached to the the rope rope and pulling well that feels much better but you have to then you have to like have someone that one is belaying you and two is feeling your weight at all times do you know what I mean yeah it's like I don't really want to be doing that there are some places that have like auto auto blaze auto blaze yeah I was told once at a bouldering gym that I'll never be very good because I'm not tall enough to be but I'm five one and they told me at a bouldering gym that I was very impressive for my height for your height that's the problem yeah but they were they they gathered other employees in the gym to come watch at how skilled I was based on my height so you're lying (laughs) (laughs) okay they didn't gather other employees but they did praise the shit out of me and said that I had very I I had very flexible limbs and incredible lower body strength that um made up for my lack of vertical right. credit vertical prowess credit. yeah yeah I am roughly five one as well but if they set the rocks too far apart I'm fucked what am I gonna do leap yeah I don't have a rope I'm not gonna leap I'm gonna die 
yeah, you're just gonna fall backwards into it. That's I think why I liked why I liked oh, being attached to a belay was because I could just kind of sit stand there and like, you know, chill. someone else is someone else is uh kind of taking care of me. Sweating. And I'm yeah. just yeah, yeah. I like rock climbing with a rope. It's just, there's, you know, there's another person involved. Sometimes you can get one from the gym. Sometimes you have to know one. And then yeah. you have to be like, cool, I'll go for it. It's like, what a negotiation. If you're bouldering, it's like, I get there. I get on the wall. Nobody bothers me. I'm done when I want to be done. Period. I think I also like the release feeling of getting to the top and then just letting go and be, and like, just coming down they're like bouncing off the wall I'm doing yeah hand as if anyone that's listening yeah ever know what I'm doing <laughs> but were you like poof, poof. <laughs> yes. that is one of the best feelings in the world that mm-hmm. is that is Willy Wonka in the bubble chamber that is that's they should have weightlessness. That's they should NASA. offer a surf a service at rock climbing gyms that's just people get to do that over they get they take yeah. you to the top they like push you all the way to the top and you just get to like come down. It's like, it's like a uh, tower of terror, but you know, a more one-on-one experience. <laughs> tower of kind of floating. Down yeah. The yeah. Tower okay. of comfort. The second would you rather is that I mentioned that we talked about uh, three white men's opinions on cancel culture recently. Now I have a non-white man's opinion on cancel culture, which is that, Kevin Hart said that he simply cannot make work without people shitting on him, shitting on it anymore. Yet he is also the most well-paid comedian around. Uh, I don't know, like in his life or in this time or whatever, but he is supposedly the most well-paid comedian. So he just produces a sheer volume of work and most of it is not like, but he is producing a lot. Um, he's rich. It doesn't really matter. I don't know if he's making it for the love of the game or for the money, but I don't know if you would rather be rich as fuck and have none of your work have any positive critical reception or make like very little money doing whatever it is that you actually want to do, but be universally regarded as like one of the most talented people. Just somehow like you've signed a deal with with the devil that you can't keep any of the money you make doing it or something. You can't, but you're successful. You just can't keep it. Yeah, it's just like you're not making any money from it. You're making very, very little money from doing this, even though you are very successful. So you wouldn't be able to sustain your life on that. I feel like it feels so noble to choose that one. (laughs) But that is the one I want to choose. But I'm like, who the fuck do I think I am? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, (laughs) I'm like, I kind of want to be extra noble right now and pick the first one and then use the money to fund the second people. So I'll take the first one, I'll make the money and then I'll give you a grant. I'll like give you a, a grant, but it, it, you can't make money from doing what you do. So I'll just, it'll be a gift in, in my it'll name. It'll be a gift. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think that we've worked out a great little deal right there. So then you're just, so in the first one, you're problematic. Uh-huh. But, but you're you, making up for it. You're doing damage control on your image. Listen, I think that we won't achieve true representation until we have as many problematic queer women of color as we do uh, cis het white men. And so I'm doing my part, contributing to diversity in the media. Yeah, that's all we can hope for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. uh. All yeah, right. it feels so it feels so self-congratulatory to be like, I would want the success, money or not. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, I think like if your if your parents are some sort of if it's nepotism, that would work out. But mm. but <laughs> I don't funny. have that. I don't have that. I don't going have that. Me. I don't have that. So, you know. Why? I'm just I'm very curious. I didn't know, I didn't realize that Kevin Hart was the most well-paid comedian until this week but I uh, he does so many little things you know Mm -hmm. he's doing so many ads he's kind of like Shaquille O'Neal but Shaquille O'Neal rocks I love Shaq yeah Shaq deserves the world yeah if I ever hear anything bad about Shaq it'll break my heart yeah but Shaq has like all these 
franchise. He does all these ads. He does like all those things. And so he's just like getting paid left and right. Kevin Hart's doing that too. Kevin Hart has like little videos with athletes that he does in the ice bath. And then he has like his, his big movies. Then he does like little shows and little appearances. He's booked and busy. Everything he does is little because he's so little. Oh, that was like cute. Almost. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, same Kevin Hart. <laughs> yeah, he's close to being cute, but then he's sort of like homophobic and stuff. Yeah, I just, I, <laughs> again, we need better short kings. I'm, I'm lobbying for it. Um, increased representation of uh, minority groups, including villainous queer women of color and more, um, you know, short kings who are allies to various communities. Amar Rizbud is on your list. Oh, yeah. Hey, he's, uh, he's, he's been on this podcast. He's 5'4". Anyone listening, if you're looking short for king. a progressive short king to put all your money behind <laughs> it's um, gotta be on a Rizba. yeah okay right now you're all going to go go to his page and 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 tweet at him you're our progressive short king if you're still listening to the podcast i would like that you do that <laughs> okay thank you now that that's you over guys, thank you that was awesome i like how you put your little spin on it <laughs> Uh, would you like to play to the dare? Sure. Truth or dare? Truth or dare? All right, Shelby, truth or dare? Um, I guess dare. I don't know okay. what you could do to me on a on a pod, so I'm just choosing it. Um, could you could you call someone? close to you in your family or a friend or someone um, describing a rash on your thigh in vivid detail. And you, I want you to suggest potential things that could have caused it. Just kind of overall worry out loud about your thigh rash and ask if you should see a doctor about it, but only after you've exhausted all your worries about the thigh rash. Okay. Hold on. I can't do my mom because I've had so many bizarre rashes that she <laughs> will, um, she would blast me. She would put me on blast. Um, I feel like everyone has a rash plug, which is like not really a plug. It's the opposite of a plug, but somebody <laughs> that you send your weird like skin problems to and be like, what is, should I be worried? I feel like everyone has that one person in their life. I once had a rash that when I, when they finally figured out what it was, it turned out to be something that they hadn't seen since the 1920s. What? And I was like, I didn't, on, I didn't know you were like a rash queen. I, this is just coincidence. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a rashy bitch. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey. Um, I have a question. Do you have a rash right now? Kill me. What? I have this rash on my leg and I don't know if, if you have it too. Don't tell me that. When it's like well, now I'm checking. Okay. Well it's like on it's like it's on like the inside of my thigh and I'm just worried like I don't know. I feel like if I have it you uh should like it's like it's not it doesn't hurt, but it doesn't feel you good think either. You think I gave either up? No, I'm asking if I don't know who gave it to who. I'm asking if I have it, it's possible you have it. And I'm worried. You don't have a rash? Do you think I have to go to the doctor? I would. You would go? You would? Yeah, I think I would. You don't even know much about it. What if I'm I'm totally fine and I'm making it up? Send me a pic. Okay. (laughs) I'll send you a pic. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay, have a good day. <laughs> Who is that? That's the girl I'm dating. <laughs> I thought she okay, would be more that, I thought she would be more intense about it because she's kind of a hypochondriac, but she didn't um it. if it's someone that you're dating and it's a rash on your inner thigh <laughs> and you're worried that she gave it to you, 
I feel like the stakes are higher than. <laughs> I guess um, that makes sense why why you should why you should go to a doctor about it. But yeah, well, she's worried. <laughs> she's worried yeah. for herself. What picture are you um, gonna send her? Oh, do I have to send a picture? I don't know. I feel like she's waiting for a picture right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should send her a selfie with your thumb up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I googled rash and she's just gonna send her. <laughs> Uh, oh my god some of these pictures are really scary okay <laughs> um well i nailed it i'm i'm talented i'm strong yeah. um truth or dare truth truth okay um what oh i had one that i was really excited about but what was it do you know um oh what's the biggest lie that you haven't been caught for yet well, I guess I'll be caught for it now. Exactly. Um, biggest lie. It doesn't have to be a big one. It could be little, but just like the most dramatic for no reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I just tweeted about this actually. I lie a lot because I treat most of life like it's improv. And I don't mean to lie. Just sometimes like I'm in a conversation with someone and I'm like, this is way more interesting than what actually happened. So like, why don't I just say it? And not with like important personal facts, but like if I'm telling a story that's like irrelevant to anything or anyone involved, I'm like, why not just make it better to tell? So that's my relationship with life. <laughs> but let's see if I can think of a big one. Hmm. In childhood, there were a lot of times I fully lied to teachers about like them inputting my grade. I was one of those. I was like, I was like Cher from Clueless and that I would fully argue my way back up to the grades that I wanted. But um, mm -hmm. I would just do it by lying. I would I would tell them that they had messed something up and like, uh, you know, forge some documents and and get so. Yeah. You know. OK, I want the worst lie in that vein that I tried to tell and got absolutely blasted for was I didn't do a paper and I tried to turn one in that I had like passed through wingdings. Like I had like typed a bunch of random letters, threw it into wingdings, like did whatever. And it was like, Oh, something happened when I went from like my Mac to PC. And they were like, no, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Oh my God, my paper was deleted when I went Mac to PC. They were like, you're uh, really stupid. When <laughs> was this? Well, if I tell you, it's more embarrassing because it was like junior year <laughs> <laughs> of high school. Yeah. Okay. I, I was like, like I feel like that's a, a high school move for sure. I don't think I that. tried. I got caught, but I did try. Something that I once did was I would make all the periods a greater size font so that it would give me a little padding in a, in a paper. Or yeah. find all, period, change. Yes. I was big on that yeah like commas all the punctuation but yeah he says yeah i was i was doing a lot with um with what i had mm -hmm. all right truth or dare? <laughs> truth why not okay this is also about lying but <gasps> have you ever lied on a resume that's like part one part two is have you ever had to like do the thing that you said you could do but couldn't do and like had to figure it out is there any instance that's ever happened there i've mostly white lied like yeah. none of my life because i don't know i guess i haven't had to yet because i had like the same job for a while but i always say that i can speak spanish mm -hmm. and that's been true at times but i <laughs> haven't spoken like i've been partially fluent in my life yeah. At this moment, if someone came to me and spoke in like fast Spanish, would I be able to like respond? No, it would take me a minute. I'd be like, can you say that slower? And yeah. I'd have to like break it down. And then my response would be really bare bones. But I did have to help lead like a training of like support in other languages thing at my company. And I was like, oh, oh I can't do that. I'm simply... I'm simply barely speaking Spanish these days. So yeah. that's 
Yeah. I mean, kind of not a juicy answer, but it is an answer. It is true. Yeah. Have you ever applied for jobs where they like really wanted someone who spoke Spanish with that? No, because I'm like, if I have to do this every day, I'm going to be fucked. Yeah. And it'll just give me stress. Like I'll be stressed out Mm -hmm. and maybe get fired. But like, that's not even part of it for me. It's like the idea of like having to talk. Having to to do that. Yeah. Cause the, I guess it's like one of those things where it's not like fake it till you make it. There's someone that you are talking to that won't understand you. Do you know what I mean? Like I could be yeah. like, oh, I, I know Excel and like not really know Excel, but it's like, okay, you can like do some Googling and like make it Yeah, work. yeah. Speaking a language is like, I mean, babe. It's like one sec and then you like Google through and yeah, they're, yeah. Like, they're like, we see what you're up to and it's bad. Uh-huh. I think one day they'll have technology where you can just speak into the phone and it'll spit out. They language. have some of that already it's crazy wow i got targeted ads for it i'm about to get them after this yeah sure so yeah there's like apps and stuff maybe i'll you know reach out and say sponsor this podcast apps because right now only we can only reach an english listener base and that's very limiting it's so limiting very limiting i i wish that we all could just speak to each other, but we can't. A universal language. I think it's food. I think it's love. I just think love requires maybe some sort of knowledge of language to get to. No. (laughs) (laughs) Love is the universal language. I okay, don't. Love. I think we're in a feud about this. So, <laughs> is it me? I gotta ask. Yeah. All right. Truth or dare? I'll do a dare. Okay. Read your three oldest drafts on Twitter. My three oldest drafts on Twitter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My first one is relevant. Sometimes I'm just walking through the world with teeny little secret parentheses my underwear is so neon it glows in the dark <laughs> okay <laughs> number two when someone asks me where my hometown is i always say about an hour south of la because i don't want to admit i grew up in orange county that one's not that funny it's just um true true <laughs> and then this one and then this one to make cow's milk you squeeze the titties to make almond milk you squeeze the nuts <laughs> Tweet that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's part of the dare. Should I add, should I keep in this little winky face or not? Yeah, you have to. Okay. It doesn't make sense without it. Okay, it's out there. All right. If that goes viral, I wonder what happens for me. <laughs> if that goes viral, then I, I do. <laughs> I, I take your note, read the stylist situation, and I, I, um, under the table the <laughs> <laughs> yeah i did all of it but it never happened yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um um okay truth or dare oh do you have a good one for either whatever you want to do Ooh. dare why not um can you go into your phone and your go into your screen time and kind of uh, give us a little overview of what you've been spending the most time doing on your phone. God, I wish it was Past interesting. Let's I see. actually asked Amr to do this, and I caught him with a lot of time spent on OnlyFans. Um, but, you know, he proudly owned it. So our progressive short king. Our progressive short king. I don't have an, only, I don't have an OnlyFans account. Like, I don't watch. Yeah, I don't either. But <laughs> I don't pay for my porn. Um, and number does, and that's awesome for him. That's why he's a progressive short king. Exactly. What am I looking at screen time? Why won't it? Oh, see all activity. I was like, it won't really tell me. So I'm spending four hour, four and a half hours on Instagram, three hours on Google Maps, <laughs> <laughs> um, an hour and nine on messages, fifty nine minutes on TikTok, forty two on Gmail, forty one on Spotify. This one's kind of embarrassing because people don't really know how much I like sports, but 30 minutes on Bleacher Report, 
So it's kind of lame. <laughs> kind of versatile, I think. Yeah. You're covering a lot of bases. Where were you going on Google Maps that you spent that much time? Um, well, what? how long is this by it's for the week? So I went to... I went to the beach twice. So the other day I went to, it was by, it was like an hour and a half away. Okay. And then the next day, I, or no, it was less than that. It was like 40 minutes away. And then the next day I went to Malibu. Mm. Next to you, the sky is so <laughs> blue. In, In Malibu. Malibu. Yeah, I went to Malibu, but it yeah. was like really cold. I feel like it's cold there a lot. It was really cool. It was like 90 in LA. So I was like, okay, we'll go to the beach. We went mm-hmm. to Malibu. It was 60 degrees, windy, no sun. They should go this week because it's hot everywhere. Right? Well, even today, it's 90 here in LA. Mm-hmm. And in Santa Monica, it's 70. Because they're out of breezy water. Exactly. Well, so it's 70, like, well, I can't keep going to the beach. 70 it's cold. Degrees. 70 degrees oh you're getting spoiled yeah I really am where were you were you always in Chicago or are you from Chicago are you from somewhere else? I'm from Cleveland okay. but I but I have family like I grew up a lot of spending a lot of time in Arizona mm-hmm. which is like hot really hot, hot. but yeah. Satan I it. Satan's armpit my mom's trying to get me to go in like a month and I'm like I don't know <laughs> it's kind of hot in the summer yeah December um but no, I, if I'm going to the beach, I like to be in the water for like a good amount of time, but mm-hmm. I don't like to be in the water if I'm not going to get out and be hot. Like I like to be hot enough where it's refreshing to go in the water. And then also like you dry really quick when you get out and you're and like, you're not cold. You're not soggy. shivering because yeah. you were just wet. You're like, okay, I'm like now toasting again. There's a short window for that. Exactly. So it has yeah. to be hot out and it can't be in the seventies, mm-hmm. high seventies. It could be like 78. Yeah. And sunny. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I, it's too much of a science for me to really uh, know. I just kind of like to sit there and I'll go in the water and then I'll bundle up after. But. I'm really hyperactive. I can't really just lay anywhere. Hmm. I don't lay. I like, I like, fidget and chat and people will want to read their book and I'm like no 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 we're gonna talk yeah um Lindsay who I was with was like should I bring a book and I was like um like if you want like that would be fun I guess if you like had a book and you were doing that and then I was I guess just watching that happen or whatever Mm -hmm. she was like okay well bring a book chill (laughs) (laughs) It's like the beach is a notorious reading spot and I've never understood it because I have to like squint so hard to make out the pages anyway. And it's just, I don't like reading period. So there's that also at play. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. We're really technologically reliant. Reliant. Yeah. Oh, well. All right. Would you like to lay a final to the dare on me? (gasps) Um, <laughs> what if I did a dare that was just so self-indulgent? I was like, okay, <laughs> change your name on Twitter to follow Shelby. Well, <laughs> I did something so like truly insane. <laughs> um, okay, truth or dare? I'll do a dare again. Okay, okay. This one's kind of tedious, so I don't know if I want to give it. Um. But it was going to be to change your voicemail. <laughs> okay. What should I change it to? I don't know is the thing. I just think it's funny. Caleb, my roommate and friend and podcast co-host, um, updated his voicemail recently and I didn't know he did it. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is to give you some fuel. Okay. This is some food for thought. I called him mm-hmm. and he picked up and it was like, yo, I'm busy. Like you're blowing up my phone. I'm busy. Leave me alone. Like it was so hyper casual and also mean that I really Mm -hmm. did think he was on the phone so much so that when it beeped, I called back to make sure. (laughs) And I, and I, but again, he was like, dude, I'm in a meeting. And I was like, yeah, no, that reads, but I had to check because you, um, 
So something really stupid um, like that. Okay. I'll play you my, my uh, current one. Hi, it's Yomni. Unfortunately, I can't make it to the phone right now, but if you leave me a message with your name and number, I'll call you back as soon as possible. Thanks. Have a great day. I feel like I do sound mean in that one too, but. This is almost more embarrassing because it's um so stupid. Mm-hmm. But do one of those ones from like seventh grade that was like, hello? I can't really hear you. <laughs> hello? Are you there? <laughs> Got you. I'm not here right now. One of those. Okay. Hello? Hello? Sorry. I, I think you're breaking up. Hello? <laughs> gotcha. I'm not here right now. If you want to reach me, you can call me back at another time and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Hope you're having a great day. Love ya. It's so embarrassing. It really is. It's such Hello? a stupid. Hello? Sorry. I, I think you're breaking up. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> gotcha. I'm not here right now. If you want to reach me, you can call me back at another time and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Hope you're having a great day. Love ya. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Perfect. there she goes. You can't change it for at least a little bit. I'm really excited for like a scam tax, a scam yeah, person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I guess when we were doing that, we weren't really getting spam calls from like telemarketers. So no one was really getting Yeah, look at the this people getting pranked for like your friends. Message I just got. It's <laughs> true. They will. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this thank you for having me. episode. Is there anything that you really are dying to let the listeners know before we go? Oh, guys. I guess follow me on all stuff. It's just my name. And listen to my podcast, Keeping Not Records. Just your name. It's, it's your name means it's a lot. It's so much more than that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's at Shelby Wolstein on all platforms because I'm not uh, terribly creative about that. And I have a podcast called Keeping Records. You can listen to that wherever you're listening to this. Um, yeah. And you should listen to it and then review it on like Apple podcasts with mm-hmm. only five stars, five stars only. So your homework after listening to this episode, everyone, one, go follow <laughs> Shelby on everything. Go listen to Shelby's podcast. Uh, that's number two. Uh, three, go review Shelby's podcast and also Pillow Fight. So you're reviewing two podcasts. Number four. So true. Number four, this is the first thing we assigned you. So you should have already done it. But I'm reminding you again. You have to tag Amar is and say, hello, short progressive king. Progressive king. Um, we love our short progressive we king. We love our short progressive king. So that's your homework assignment. I hope. And if you are a manager, represent me. Mm-hmm. Should I start managers. Doing- there's a lot of managers who listen. Should I start podcast? doing that on all platforms? Everything I do, I just go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Follow me on everything. If you're a manager, represent me. And really start getting desperate about I, it. I I would like to say that I have a huge base of managers listening to this podcast, but I think it'd be very sad for me if I did and they just kind of listen and don't have an not they just listen. <laughs> they just listen. They just go, good, good okay, stuff. Well, you know, <laughs> love <we'll> the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but like you, I don't know about that. But the but podcast, podcast is really good. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much to everyone who listened. Catch you next time. Bye. Pillow Fight is a production by me. Yamini Nambimadam with music by Greer Baxter.